Perfect. Thank you, Jason, for being here with me on this live. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's 2021, everybody. And welcome to episode number four of Initiation, Wisdom Juiced from the Darkness. There is very few people I'd rather talk to about wisdom juiced from the darkness than you, Jason. Um, is there anything you'd like to start off with saying with the energy? I'm sure everybody who's watching feels the intensity at the moment. Yeah, so yesterday we went from uh, 262 to 308 in 12 hours. Mm -hmm. We usually do that over the course of several months. So that was a really fun ride yesterday. I mean, there was like, I had micro seizures, which was always a fun experience. You know, like I woke up at 3.30 in the morning. It was literally 3.33 at, when I looked at my clock and I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. And then my body started like micro seizuring from the fingertips all the way through. But it was like it knew exactly what it was doing. So there was no fear. It was just this divine intelligence where it's like, oh, OK, I know what's going to happen here. I'm flushing out my cellular matrix. My entire body is just going to be reprogrammed. Here we go. And then that happened until about nine o'clock in the morning. So it was about six hours of seizing in my bed. And mm. then I was fine. I just passed out again, woke up and then got some water and then laid on my table and I was good to go. But one of the things that people don't get about Ascension is you've done lots of things with your body. Yeah. Everyone has like, you, you've had this, this wonderful, amazing thing since you were born. And many of you are older than, you know, five or six years old. Hopefully most of you, but if not, then hey, congratulations to the new <laughs> age. I'm really looking forward to those kids in the, in the future. But that being said, you know, your body has gone through stuff. And because your body has gone through stuff, it's going to have to ungo through those things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, a, it's an intelligence, so it will do it. But if you get in the way of it, it'll cause problems. So I could have been afraid. I could have like been extremely fearful. I could have been like, oh, I need to call the hospital. I need to take a drug. I need to do all these things. But instead I tuned, tuned in with my body and I was like, I know what this is. This is going to be okay. I know exactly what I need to go through. I know what you need to go through. Let's do this. Because this year, especially, but like in the years prior, it would have been helpful. But this year, this year, especially because we're going to be getting up there, like more data every hour, more and more and more and more and more. And it's just not going to stop. So our bodies need to be with us on this ride. Like there's no other way around it. Like you used to be able to drag your body with you. And not anymore. So for those of you who haven't watched my bo the body as a child video, which is like the second video or third video I ever did, go back and watch that because that's like a key thing for this year. Really mm. understand you can't let your body just be dragged along for the ride anymore. You and your body have to be in lockstep. You guys got to work together. And uh, that, that's basically my update is be prepared. This year is really a physical year where you and your body are going to get to know each other on levels you didn't even know were possible. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. You know, with the intense energies coming in, a lot is being highlighted. I know for many people, many people reach out to me um, through private message to talk about mental health, suicidal tendencies, addiction, a lot of things. Um, and I believe that people are really feeling it on a broad scope right now. A lot of old trauma is being highlighted. A lot of old stories are and people are going through so many things with mental health with addiction with really like those hidden places in their mind maybe they had overlooked or thought they had done the work through but it's being highlighted to even a higher extent so there's this feeling of i've done all of this work i've come so far in my healing journey but i'm not getting anywhere and i feel super discouraged the entitlement syndrome is what I call it. It's very mm. common right now because everyone, you know, that's older, you guys did a lot of work. You helped the planet create a template of reality where it ascended. And now you're in that template and you get to redo that work one last time because this is for real this time. And because it's for real this time, it's a whole other level of depth than you're used to. And for many of you, you've never explored from a dimensionality perspective, which means it's the same signal, but the depth of it is expanded. And so your dimensionality is now turned online. So where you would used to only look at it at like 10 points of reality, now you're looking at it at like at 308 points of reality. Mm. So there's a massive mm. difference. 
I mean, when I was born, it was one data point every three hours, which was an 84. <laughs> so just, just to like put in perspective, we're now at 308 every hour. Data is pure energy. So that's pure light. So your entire darkness, all that is misunderstood. And for the record, everyone that doesn't understand what I'm saying, because if you're new to me, when I say darkness, I mean the misunderstood. Mm. That's all it is. Because I don't think that darkness exists in the way that we think it does. I mean, light and darkness, there's this whole concept. And they're like, oh, no, you got to have clarity. But then I point at like orbs. And people are like, well, that's weird because there's no shadow. So mm -hmm. I'm like, exactly. Open your mind. Realize that our, our value of light and dark is very archaic. It's, it's a very outdated system. And as we move forward, this belief of misunderstood and understood is going to be like much more healthy to go forward. Because if you don't understand someone, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That just means that there's something to learn from it. So if you're labeling someone as dark, that means you don't understand them. Right. And everybody's doing what they're here to do as best they, they know how to do it. It's just how it works. And if you think that you know better than them, you have not walked a day in their shoes. Mm. And I mean, that's just how it really turns out. So really focus on you this year. That's like my best advice. I can't give you better advice. This year, really focus on you. And bring your body along for the ride, like actually come in, get to know it, work with it. And yeah, like, you know, squeeze the, the shadow and, and really find the truth of what it is you don't know and what you don't understand. And you're going to find that this year is the best year of your life. Choose not to bring your body along for the, the adventure this, this year. And you're going to find this is probably going to be one of the worst years of your life and maybe the last. Mm -hmm. So this is a very real strong year where you're going to put into practice everything you preach. It is really about authenticity in this point, self-sovereignty and authenticity. I cannot tell you how important those two concepts are, but if you don't know what they are, that's okay. That's actually better than if you think you know what those are. Because for those of you that are like, oh, I know what authenticity and sovereignty are. I've been doing that for years. No one on this planet knows the level of depth that we're about to explore those two concepts. And that's a great thing. That's a new thing and a wonderful thing because sovereignty at the level that we're about to begin to go towards has never been done in physical form. We've attempted it, it just never worked. So this is gonna be a brand new year, a year that you can't imagine. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you know, I told you guys that 2020 was gonna be probably one of the weirdest, hardest, strangest year. <laughs> I even said there was gonna be an epidemic. I didn't expect it to be a pandemic, but it, it's the same concept. Like this year shook out all the shadows so that we could look at it. So if you're in a suicidal depression spiral right now, that's totally okay. And you're not alone in that. In fact, if you could actually see, you would see that a lot of people are in that space because yeah. everything came up, but now it's up and it's not going back in. So you either do the work or it doesn't work. It's just that simple. You know, I'm reminded of a time not long ago at all where I had that entitlement and it was at the end of 2018 it was like December 2018, January and February. So for three months, I was having sleep paralysis like five times a week. So five times a week, I would wake up lucid, totally aware, but paralyzed. And these entities would come and like sit on my chest and choke me out you know, like sometimes sexually assault me. They would leave marks on my neck. I mean, shove their fingers down my throat, scream in my face like a dinosaur. These were the most aggressive things I've ever dealt with in the physical or the spiritual realm ever. And I remember I reached out to you, Jason, while this was happening because I was terrified. I was terrified to sleep. I slept with the lights on. It didn't matter. I was like, you know, standing up to it. I was saging, I was saying prayers, I was shielding all of these things. And I started to get really angry with God. I was like, how are you going to let this happen to me? Like I'm sober now, you know, like I'm doing the right thing. I've done all of these, all this work. This shouldn't be happening. This level of darkness should not be happening to me when I'm trying to do the next right thing again and again. Like I felt like a victim. Yep. I was very victimized in that state. And I messaged you. It's one of the first times I've ever messaged you. And the way that you responded to me in that was much different than anybody else I was working with. And I mean, I was working with like the Mormon church with the Melchizedek priesthood coming in here and like saying 
you know, different blessings and stuff like any resource, every resource available to me, I was, I was trying. Yep. And the way that you responded to me was these entities aren't necessarily dark. They're misunderstood. And when we can look at them maybe as like a misunderstood child, we lose the charge. This is me paraphrasing how I took in what you said, yeah. but we can, we can lose the charge that we broadcast out. And at that point, when we become neutral, they no, are no longer really there. Yeah. And you also mentioned something about the tear in Atlantis. And this is how these zero dimensional beings came in. So yeah. I have two, two questions here. One, are those zero dimensional beings that came through through the tear in Atlantis, the same dimensional beings that are being pulled out from our reality now, those e negative ETs? Some of them. Okay. Yeah. And two, I just wanted to say, I never had sleep paralysis again. Yeah, because you yeah. neutralized it. Right. You see, this world is about polarity and empowering the victim. And for those of you who haven't seen that one, there's a video called Empowering the Victim. Highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. Because when you are an empowered victim, the world wants to make you stay empowered. It's like an artificial ceiling. So I'm not, I don't know the people that helped you before or anything like that. And I'm not saying anything against those groups for the record, mm -hmm. but yeah. I don't believe in that style. Somebody comes to me with a problem. They can acknowledge their problem. That's huge. Congratulations. You have a problem. Mm -hmm. You've acknowledged you have a problem. We can work on that. That's awesome. Congratulations. Right. But the step isn't that I go, Oh, I'm sorry, Missy, that sucks for you. And you know, blah, 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 because if I do that, then I've just empowered your victim state. And all that's doing is creating bigger issues. I can say I empathize with you and say, hey, you know, when I went through sleep paralysis as a little kid, it really sucked. Mm -hmm. But I got to work through it and I learned so much. And I actually learned a lot from those beings and it helped me tremendously moving forward. So what we can do is we can help someone without weakening them. And actually, I, I've just been doing this with one of my students because they're going through a really hard healing crisis right now. And they've been reaching out to everyone and everything except for themselves. Mm. And that is never going to work. No matter how much skills and abilities you have within your, your group around you, which is great. It's your team, right? Like they were working with you. They're there to help you. They can't help you if you can't help yourself. Jason. And I really want to say that again, they can't help the greatest thing around you. And you froze just for a minute there, Jace, like, uh, I don't know, 15 seconds. Yeah. Okay. I was saying, if you can't be your own go-to, then your team can be the best team in the world, but it isn't going to matter yeah. because you won't be able to apply what they help you with. You'll be able to live their teachings, but this isn't about living their teachings. It's about taking their teachings, making it your own and living. And you can't do that if you're not your own go-to. So what that means is next time you find yourself in crisis, breathe, acknowledge, put your hand on your heart for just a second. It doesn't even take that long and just say, okay, I'm here with you, body. What is it you need? And your body might say, go to Bob. And you go, oh, okay, yeah. And then you go to Bob and then you listen to Bob and you take what Bob gives you as advice, not as gospel truth, but mm -hmm. as advice, you then take your perspective and Bob's perspective and create an ascended perspective, bringing the two together. And then you move forward. You see, this is how we empower ourselves out of victim and move into responsibility and commitment and begin to truly change the world. Mm -hmm. And the world is our world. It's never been a more true statement than it is today that the world is our world. And all of the flaws, all of the mistakes, all the misunderstandings that we exist in is our mess. So how do we wanna clean it up? If you're at war with anything going on in the world right now, you're creating a mess for yourself. If you're able to accept everything that's going on in the world, you're helping to clean up that mess collectively. Now that doesn't mean that you have to agree with it. I really wanna point this out for those that are new. Acceptance and agreement are not the same thing. Acceptance is the ability to acknowledge that it is. That's all it is. So most people don't have the ability to acknowledge that something is. This is why it's so important. When Missy came to me, she told me she had a problem. 
if she hadn't said that, if she'd been like, hey, Jason, uh, everything's great. You know, well, that's awesome. I'm just uh, wanting to say hi to you. I would have been able to help her because there's no opening to receive information. There's no space for her to heal. You, you got to understand that when you, when you journey forward, you, you have to be willing to acknowledge what's going on. Like, it, and it doesn't make you less than. So like, for instance, that micro seizure thing, a lot of facilitators wouldn't want to tell you about that because that would make them sound like they were weaker or anything like that. It's one of the reasons why I like Missy a lot is because she's just very raw and real. That's what we need right now. We need people who say, hey, you know, I do the best I can. I'm not perfect. I don't want to be perfect. Don't put me on a pedestal. I'm just a teacher that's here being an example as best I can. I'm falling on my face from time to time. It happens. Our bodies are bodies. We are in them. We're learning how to navigate them in a brand new world. It's a, it's a fun experience but you, you got to have the openness to heal and the openness to heal means you don't know what you don't know. One of my favorite things that my sensei used to do was I would come in and he'd be like, so how's your day? And I was like, Oh, that's perfect. Everything's great. And he'd be like, cool. So the door's over there. You, you know, can you need to leave? Then you can, <laughs> cause you got nothing to work on. What's the point in coming here? If, if you really want to be the perfect thing and you want to pretend that that's the truth, why are you coming to me? And that helped me a lot because it was a really good question. It's like, Hey, if you don't want to show me who you really are, I can respect that, but I also can't help you. Mm. My job is not to help you because my job is to see you as perfect. So if you truly are perfect, then we don't have anything to say. Go forth and, and change the world. Thank you for being perfect. I've never met a perfect person in my entire life, but it doesn't mean that I couldn't see them as perfect. Mm. I've lived a long time too. I've seen a lot of people that would be considered perfect by most, but I've never seen a perfect person. Not one. I'm open to it. I just haven't had that experience, <laughs> I guess. I love, I loved your vulnerability. I, I loved how in the last live you did on the negative ETs, you spoke to something that I felt many times. I mean, which was, can you, can you see and accept that there's a possible version of you? that was in, you know, Germany pulling these switches, yep. you know, um, for the Holocaust. And what I found really fascinating about what you were saying there was, that's like a highly controversial thing to say. Yep. And like, you're learning this art of stepping out and saying that, which is really vulnerable. I remember, you know, earlier in 2020, when there was all of this stuff going down with like, George Floyd and the cop that, that like murdered him in front of like on a camera. And when I first saw that video, I was like, oh shoot, like is I could see myself in that cop yep. because I've been so convicted. Like I know what I'm doing and I will die for what I believe in or I'll kill like this martyr thing like that I've carried in with me lifetime after lifetime after lifetime of like, I will die for what I believe in. And I, I will kill for what I believe in. I'll do anything for God. It's like this, or like the terrorists who, you know, suicide bombed the Twin Towers. In their mind, they were convicted in devotion to God. Yeah. So this is, this is highly controversial. Anyone who can like read or feel my energy will know I'm not trying to say this to be anything other than just real and, and vulnerable and honest in that when we can zoom out far enough to see these things as, wow, I have compassion and love for this person in that moment, for whatever it is that brought them to that moment, thinking that what they were doing was, was the right choice. And also to see on a higher level, on a higher spiritual level, that both George Floyd and this cop made agreements to each other and to the ascension of the world to, to allow for this to unfold in this way and how brave of both of them. So, I mean, that's not something I ever thought I would share with anybody. But again, it's like, I appreciate that level of vulnerability, transparency, and your willingness to share that because it inspires me, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, to me personally, like, if I'm not as real as I can be, then I'm not being of service in the way that I came to be. And that can mean that I like say things that trigger people. I tell mm -hmm. people, if you don't like what I have to say, that's totally fine. And if it really triggers you and you don't want to work on that trigger, then you can unfollow me. 
because I'm not here to gain followers. I'm not here to have this massive thing. I don't need anything. I just am doing this because it feels good. It feels like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So here I am. And I don't really think there needs to be anything else. One thing that's an interesting thing, and this is as a, as a someone that was raised about Christian for me, it was very hard for me to get this one. This one's actually harder than the Auschwitz one, which mm. is, could you be Judas? Ooh, because one, he thought he was right too in that moment. Exactly. Well, yeah. there's a lot of interesting things around that whole concept because maybe he was right. Maybe he wasn't right. right. We don't know, but it's not about whether he was right or whether he was wrong. The real question is, could you be it? So if in that moment, your conviction led you to being that, could you do that? Could you, in theory, pull that, that switch, so to speak, or mm -hmm. say those things? Could you lead that, that person to their death? Mm -hmm. And if you're being real, you, as where you are now with all the choices and things that you've made, you might say no. And that's fine. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I would say absolutely not. With everything that I know and everything that I am, I would not be that thing. However, I was not raised the way that I was raised. Mm -hmm. I don't have the same issues. So there's no way to know whether I could do that thing. So the answer will always be, yes, I could do that thing. Could Jason, that has lived the life that Jason has lived, do that thing? No. And you see, that's the difference between acceptance and agreement. I don't agree with certain things that happened in the past. And there's nothing wrong with that. But can I accept that they happened? Yeah. Can I accept that there's a version of me that could have done that thing? Yeah, absolutely. Because there's infinite versions of me. So the, the more that I'm willing to be everything, the more that I'm able to heal everything. And that's a very hard thing to do. I remember when I was younger in my, my journey, I was asked, could I believe that there was no God? And it spent me like two years spending just to try to solve that one thing because it was like, wait, no, yeah, <laughs> God could not, maybe. And like, it broke my brain, but it was one of the best things that ever happened. It was done by somebody to like hurt me, but it was still one of those things because I was standing on faith, but I was standing on the faith that was someone else's faith and that person did a very nice thing to me even though at the time I hated that person because for two years literally I couldn't figure out whether I, my entire life had been a lie or whether this was true or any of this other stuff because I was looking at everything from other people's point of view the faith that I had wasn't strong in the sense that I thought it was it was an illusionary faith and the the little tiny thing in the soapbox that I was standing on got kicked out from under me. And it took me two years to recover from that. And it was a beautiful <laughs> thing because when I came back, it was like, yeah, I can totally accept that there was no God. I can also accept that there is a God currently in my understanding. So it doesn't bother me, right? But at that time, if somebody had said, hey, you know, Jason, there's no God, I would be like, <laughs> and, and now I'm like, cool. I'm glad that that's where you're at. Do you want to tell me why you're expressing that to me in this moment? Because there's mm -hmm. always something to gain. And I don't know what it is, but I want to understand what you're coming from, right? If you have the openness to look at world empty, completely, 100%. That's why we call it masters of the void, because we're mastering void state. Can I show up in connection with you with nothing? No, I'm not there yet, but that's my goal. That's what I want to be. So every time I show up, mm. the moment I show up, I take inventory. I go, oh, I can see that belief structure, that personality. I can see all these things. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and clean that up. And then, you know, within like the first five to eight minutes of the live, I'm in a pretty clear space. And then it's like, cool. Yeah, I can explore anything now. Let's see where we go. And I, I try to challenge myself in that. I try to show up as much as I can infinitely in every situation so that I can come from your point of view if I need to. Mm. And understanding is ultimately why we're here like if you think about the whole thing let's go back to adam and eve if that's a real thing doesn't matter so those of you that don't believe it's a real thing doesn't matter the story is still a story that we tend to live by so this fruit which we're going to call an apple just because it's easier for our imaginations an apple we bite down on it and then all of a sudden all of the truth all of the knowledge and again knowledge doesn't mean wisdom this is really important all of the truth and all the knowledge of everything that ever was or ever would be is immediately bombarded into us and all of our misunderstandings become manifest. 
what if we are that misunderstanding right now, moving back towards the moment that we bet down? What if that's the case? I don't know if it's the case. I feel like it's the case, but what if? (laughs) Then wouldn't it fall to me then to gain as much understanding as I possibly could in this life through experiencing and witnessing others' experiences? What if that was the answer? What if that was why we came here in the first place? If it isn't, then that's fine. At least I had a lot of fun doing it. I love having conversations and learning. I feel like um, a lot of my dream time has been so weird lately. One thing that I personally go through is I go through using dreams. Like in 2020, I have had dozens of using dreams where I'll just like be in the dream and I'll have relapsed already. And it's just like this devastation, like, oh, and I have to like feel everything uh, as if I had done like the ultimate betrayal to myself, you know, because for me, because what? You've made it the betrayal. If you were to relapse uh, and use drugs, is that really betraying you? Because it's some version of you, you have to be willing to reuse drugs. Because if you can't accept that version of you, what happens? It's the same thing as the Auschwitz lover. But for you, it's a very visceral, real example. And the reason I know that is because that's a very very visceral, real example for me, because I was addicted to Oxycontin. So I know the struggle that you're going through, that that heroin and synthetic heroin, they really mess you up. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing as, can you be Judas? Can you be the German? Can you be a drug addict? Can you? Yeah, you can. But if you're not willing to let yourself be that in another version, you're always going to be at war with it. And that's the struggle. That's the thing. That's the very real question. It's the same thing as, well, what if there wasn't a God? Well, what if I did relapse? If you can't explore that, it will always haunt you. Hmm. I know real truths, lots of information, but it it is how it works. If I can't look at something, and this is why I gave the suicide example the other day, is because so many people weren't willing to express that they felt suicidal. Like I could just feel it. I had so many clients come to me, they're like, I do feel suicidal. I was like, don't worry, I felt suicidal the other day too. It's just the thing. Wave comes in, we feel suicidal, we feel like we can't do it, we can't move on, it's impossible. Wave goes away, we're like, oh, and actually everything's good again. It, it's this thing, right? Like this is what happens. Light amplifies, shows you the shadow. You either understand the shadow or willing to understand the shadow, key being willing. And then you solve the shadow and all of a sudden you feel greater and you are more expressive and more open and you're less triggerable. Until eventually you get to a point where the light just shines through you and you're just like, oh, that actually felt kind of good. Cool, moving on. Because you don't have anything that it's shining on. You've cleared yourself. And as more light comes in, more things are shown, but you don't make your identity that I am Jason the cleared. Why Mm. would you do that? That's like the worst thing you can ever do to yourself. I am above this. This is (laughs) not worth my time. I don't need to ever work again. And then you're like, okay, cool. So then why are you on the floor right now shaking? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like I've, I've heard all of it. I've said it myself, you know, when I was an immature spiritual person, I didn't know what I didn't know. And there's nothing wrong with that. And if you're one of those people who are like, I've healed everything there is to be healed, then, you know, if you find yourself on the floor in the next few months, just remember that you said that. Because if you say that you've healed everything there is to be healed, something new will be formed for you to heal. And thank you for pioneering. Mm, You know, I'm still really reluctant to even say like, I'm awake or I'm awakened or I'm woke. It's like, I feel like I'm just... I'm saying to the to God or the universe, like, show me every area that I'm not, you know, and just exactly hit yeah. me with it hard. So and they will, and they will very <laughs> much. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it's just like I'm Jason, just Jason, doing the best I can. I still have flaws. I still have misunderstandings because I'm still alive. Mm-hmm. If I still have a body, it's because there's something to work out. That's the entire reason that I have a body. Now, you might not agree with me, and you don't have to, and that's totally fine. Again, this is your journey. This is my journey. My journey, what I've learned is I have so many things that I learn every day. I can't even begin to tell you how many things 
I learn every day. And I hope to God with everything that I am, that I will continue to learn at least this much or more every day because it makes life amazing. What is life's purpose if you're not understanding new things? There's so much to explore in this world and yet we get stuck on a little tiny fixed idea. Mm. Whatever that fixed idea is, you just gotta find it and work through it. So for most people, they feel like they've done all the work. Well, if you've done all the work, you'd be dead. If you're listening to this, you're not dead, just, just so you know. Unless you are dead and you're a ghost, in which case, dude, congratulations on being able to like be able to pick up sound and stuff and being dead. That, that's impressive. Usually just mental image pictures. So props to you, ghost. <laughs> I'd love to touch on mental health with you. You know, I, I'm somebody who struggled with mental health my entire adult life that I didn't really even know I was struggling with mental health. I because we're, you know, for me, I was just so in my experience, I thought everybody was really experiencing that level mm. of hardship and, and, and depression and the mental chatter that that it's so negative. Um, I still experience that. Um, when I first wake up in the morning, it's I feel like really heavy and, and dense. I've always felt this way. Even when I was like eight years old, you know, but this is where a lot of like the the, the the dark like little voices will come through um it was like a month ago or so that i was kind of like in this depressive state and this real-time voice went through my mind it said you should just kill yourself <laughs> and i was like wow because this is the thing like i've never been suicidal i'm not sure why um it's not something like i've struggled with the tendencies of so I, ha I have enough discernment to be like, that's not me. Did you think it? Like, did you say thank you, random entity that's telling me to kill myself? I, I, had, a, I had a definitely a conversation with it. I was like, interesting. I've heard this same voice before when I got off all medications, every single oh, one, it took me so long. And it was like, you should go to the pharmacy and pick up that last script. I was like, okay, that's not me because I've just fought my ass off to get completely off these medications. Like, so then what is it? Right. Yeah. And again, it comes what it is. You're, you're actually being able to find who you are. So like you literally are starting to figure out what is you and what isn't you when you begin right. that journey. And right. It can be like one of those things you go negative and be like, Oh my God, I have voices in my head. It's horrible. I must be going to cry. <laughs> or you can be like, wait, I can acknowledge other voices that aren't me so I can begin to clean those out mm -hmm. and then all I have left is me right and my goal was always to be me so this is actually progress it is and I, and I yeah. actually have like really positive voices in my head too and, and yeah, I love yeah. I love this because it's it's not a conversation for everybody and I love that I can have these conversations with you you're like my favorite person to talk entities with <laughs> But with the negative ETs that are being pulled out of, you know, like the subterranean earth. It's more like pocket dimensions, but okay. Pocket dimensions. Okay. Yeah. Um, are these the same entities that we're maybe like speaking through? Like, are we in agreements with these entities? Like what's, what's going on here? It's a bit strange. So uh, imagine this, these beings came in and then the world had like all these layers of time and space that came in around them. So they might've come in with the most positive intention, but then they got stuck in density for 9,000 plus years. Like, can right. you imagine being stuck and then the dimensions changing and overlapping, but then they can't move and they get stuck in these little tiny compartmentalized things. So these beings may or may not be wanting to help humanity. I'm not saying all of them did because some of them were zero dimensional beings. Mm -hmm. And earlier when you said, are some of these from that time? The answer is yes, but not all of them because some of them I came here to help those beings and others came Aww. here to help those beings that came here to help those beings. And then more came to help those beings that helped those beings. And so it just kept stacking on until eventually it got really messy. And then what mm -hmm. happened was all that depression, all that angst, all that fear of like not being able to escape, not being able to come out became this mental fog that existed and it filtered through the dimensions into our world. And so what happens is this is why drugs are so dangerous in the current moment is because when you take drugs or alcohol, you tear holes in your field. Oh yeah. 
that fog comes through that hole. And all of a sudden, you have this entity's fog inside of you. And it's thinking its thoughts. And it's stuck. It's been stuck for thousands of years. So your value to process somebody who's been in suffering for thousands of years is not on par, just to be honest with you. Like almost everyone here, if you had an ancient entity thoughts inside your head, it would rattle around probably for your whole life. Well, for most of us who were born before 1987, that layer just permeated our being when we were growing up. Like, I mean, my mom and dad, you know, they had negative entity stuff guaranteed. Their mom and dad guaranteed. Their mom and dad, you know, all the way down. And then in 1987, a lot changed. And then those beings that wanted to reinforce that created a whole new level of brainwashing to throw out on us, which worked really well, actually, to be honest. I'm pretty impressed with their capabilities. But that being said, like where we are now, this fog is dissipating every day, more and more of it just going away. And then what's left is the noise. So there's, there's a difference. The negative ET fog and the noise are not the same thing. The noise is what humanity did with that fog to create it stronger, which, you know, in, in all honesty, actually helped because it led us to push against things, which then taught us our own strength. And then mm -hmm. we had our own inner struggle, which made us our, our heroes. We became the hero of our own story again, instead of a, a supporting character. And so it all really worked to help us. So depending on which layer you look at to answer your question, yes, we contracted with it. No, we didn't contract with it. So like if you've been stuck in an incarnation cycle, you haven't had a chance to contract with it. But if you came down like on a rescue mission, so to speak, then yeah, you had you knew exactly what you're getting yourself into. So there are some mm. people here who have been stuck for like the last 9,000 years, just jumping into body after body after body and haven't been able to go home and get debriefed. Wow. And then there are people here who didn't do that. I, I'm not saying they're asleep, the people that got stuck in the incarnation cycle, but there it's harder for them to understand truth and see it. Because imagine if you got stuck for 9,000 years and you were just in human bodies and you witnessed the worst of humanity and it's all stuck in your DNA and you haven't had a chance to go home and get debriefed, meaning like you haven't actually had a chance to clean all that out. And then you have all of us that are these like high level beings that we call ourselves and we integrate into this world, but we're clean and clear because we just came from home and we're here and now we're judging these people, which only puts more cages on them mm -hmm. saying, hey, you're not awake enough to be my friend. It's right. like- Dude, that person's been in like hard labor for like 9,000 years. Can you imagine? And then like we're victimizing them. It makes zero sense. It's like the spiritual bullying mentality that's come around in the last like year, really strong in the last year, makes zero sense to me. Because it's like, dude, you, you got to go home. Of course you have more clarity and insight. How compassion for these people who haven't been home in a long, long time. I can't even imagine what it would be like to get stuck down here for that long. I'm just, I'm just thinking of how the experience that you just explained sounds a whole lot like addiction and just being trapped in this loop that you can't escape from. And it's so interesting. I actually think addiction is that. It, it, sound, it feels like the same energy, doesn't it? Well, it feels exactly I, I the same. that's why it was created, though. Like, these beings that are stuck in pocket dimensions that have been there for the better part of 9,000 years and don't have any way out, the level mm -hmm. of depression and, and fear and struggle they have, and then you do a drug and you tear a hole in your field, and now their thoughts are your thoughts. Oh. You can't the difference. It's kind of like being hijacked by the signal. I call it the signal, but it's, it's in small groups usually. But the signal that's coming in, you know, you don't have a protection against it if you've done drugs and alcohol and torn holes then that signal came in and if you weren't strong enough in your own signal, your own divine nature, mm. you let that signal take over. Yeah. I actually think that's what addiction is because whenever I got out of addiction, and I know that's a controversial statement, apparently once an addict, always an addict. I've never agreed with that statement. Don't like it mm. at all. I think that it limits you from your capabilities. But when I was in addiction, I was not myself. I was something else. And that thing that I was being was that signal. I was playing out this entity who was, was stuck. Mm -hmm. And then that's what it means to be possessed, literally. Well, addiction is possessing you. 
I know that's not a popular statement, but I'm also not a popular person. So it works out. <laughs> so when you realize that signals are how you interpret reality, and then you realize that there's been these beings that have been stuck in the worst levels of depression mm -hmm. that have been giving off all these signals and that you're telepathic by nature. Humanity is telepathic by nature. The CIA acknowledged that mm -hmm. in a document. Like they actually said, everyone is telepathic. It just requires some skill to learn to use it. But that means it's always on. So you're always telepathically connected to something. And that signal currently, at least until the 8th of January, is coming in from these beings in the highest levels of depression, in the highest levels of fear, and they're being cleaned up. We haven't had a space that was signal free for a long time. So if you, I just want you to kind of take a second here. Those of you that hug trees and you know what I'm talking about when you're like, a tree you and that tree are so close that the signal of the fog is not able to interfere so you feel better you feel happy imagine if earth was the only signal you had other than your own divine nature imagine if you could feel everyone else's signal clearly i believe that fog is what led humanity to become criminal because if depression and fear drive you criminality becomes more of a norm for you. Look at paranoia. Look at all of the things that happen on this planet. They're mm. from a fear-based structure. So you look at greed. Greed is about the fear of not having enough someday. So you start supplying and collecting. Well, if you're stuck in density and you can't get out of it, then you're afraid of something and that fear is driving you. So it makes sense that we would create all these other fears and that we would try all these insecurities out physically. Because we've basically been trying to help these beings by creating a template for them to go home all this time. And now we finally succeeded. We have built a template for these beings to get home. And now they're going home. But it's time for Earth and humanity to begin their real journey. And that's because we're going to have the ability to feel the signal. And the signal of Earth is beautiful. Like, it's grand. Anyone that's ever gone camping, if you're depressed and you go camping and you come back, uh, you'll have to deal with your stuff because that signal of earth is going to show you where the fake signal is have you ever been camping oh yeah you know how like you go out and you camp and then if you're alone you start to to sit with yourself but there's a mm. signal because the forest protects you mm. that forest is strong man trees they, their signal is strong they're like antennas to god beautiful amazing things i love trees why i'm planting millions of trees over the next few years the idea is to change the world by creating a better signal that's true, mm -hmm. getting us back into what we're here to do, getting us back on track, so to speak. And the signal of Earth is designed to bring you home. This is why in February we go home. Like actually at the end of January we go home, but the, the middle of February is when we finish the last Universal Energy Center and, and we're home. So right now depression's at an all time high Right now, suicide's at an all-time high. Do you know why? Because the signal that made them think that they should commit suicide is diminishing. Mm -hmm. And what happens whenever you have cognitive dissonance is you go to an extreme. So all of these people, the signal that's running them, they're freaking out about it. And they're pushing harder towards that polarity because they've identified with that signal instead of being themselves because they didn't have a signal that showed them themselves. There wasn't enough people on this planet that were being themselves to bring them home yet. You see, home is a space within us. It's not a planet. It's not a person. It's not something else. It's a space within us. And when we're all allowed to go home, we debrief. We can see clearly what is and isn't us. Just like you were talking about with the voice in your head. That was you getting to a space of home that brought up things that weren't home so that you could work through those things so that you could go home even deeper until eventually you are home. And I don't know, and again, this is one of those things where it's like, I believe in ascending. I don't know about ascended. Uh, it's kind of the same thing with home. Being home fully, mm, I don't know if that's possible in physicality. Because mm -hmm. the moment you complete something, it never existed, so what was the point? <laughs> but new levels of home, absolutely. It's just like peace that passes all understanding. Congratulations, you got the first level. But but it's peace that passes all understanding. Yeah, congratulations, you got the first level. What do you mean? Well, if you had the second level, you wouldn't be telling me you had peace that passes all understanding. You would just be like, I feel good today. And 
then you know it's that whole process of like the piece of puzzle understanding would mean that it's better than everything else no it's the beginning of everything else and it will continue to enhance or diminish based on your own choices and actions but congratulations on getting to the first level that's why we call it basic you've learned the basic mm -hmm. value of being human in a world that teaches you everything else You know, I, I've had so much firsthand experience with entities coming into my body and being possessed by entities, tearing holes in my inner, in my auric field. And I mostly had experiences when I was in jail or mm. detoxing. It was mostly the detoxing when really weird things would happen yeah. to me. Something about detoxing from drugs, just like would split my energy and allow both good good entities, but also like negative entities to um, come in and want to have interactions with me, want to talk to me, you know? Um, this one experience I had, what's that? It's detox. It's the detox. That you are. It's detox. It's out. And the signal, if we want to go with that analogy, is now going to bounce off your walls until you clear the signal in your house, which is one of the reasons that people sage. Mm, so sage mm. only breaks up pieces and fragments. It's not as strong as clearing in other ways. So you have the signal in your house that comes off of you. So you go out into the world. Let's just make this a great example. You go out into the world, you go to work, you sit in an office where a signal is constantly being broadcast. We call it EMFs here on this planet. And then you have this negative ET signal and all this other stuff. And it's just like sticking on your field, right? It's not actually in your field unless you have the tears, but it's sticking on it. Mm. Go to your house. Now imagine that you have like this really nastiness all over you and you don't know it because you've never been taught to wash it off. But you come into your house. What do you do with that signal? Well, now it just comes off of you and it starts caking onto your walls. And then you keep doing that day after day after day after day. Until eventually there's more signal in your house than light. And so now your house has become a dormant space for the signal. And so you go into your house and you only feel more depressed and more anxious and horrible instead wow. of where you once felt better because that signal starts to weigh down the space until eventually you might actually feel better outside than you do inside your house. They call this dead space. Well, it's not dead. It's actually very much alive. It's just in a negative frequency. So you now have a negative space and you're out in the world and you're actually happy. You have a great day and you go home. And here's the greatest part. We sleep in this. So just take a second here. The most important time where you're the most vulnerable and you have the most ability to be affected, you're laying in a bed that you probably not energetically clean that has the signal like woven into the fibers of it, because most likely you don't clean your laundry using frequency based stuff. So your entire house is like a dark den of confusion and chaos and you sleep in it. Mm. So your eight hours that you're supposed to get that you regenerate and heal is actually you being possessed and poked on all night. Oh and then you, you only get reprieve when you leave your house, but your house is supposed to be your sanctuary. Huh? And people wonder why road rage exists. I mean, it's common sense. The more time you spend in the space, if you don't upkeep the space, the more signal that exists that is negative. Because light doesn't stay. Light is generated and it moves through things. Because it's supposed to. Freedom. It's free. Light. Free, right? So your house, you can basically do a light grenade. It will go through everything and clean it. But, but it doesn't stay. So you have to create a generator that keeps it going. It's one of the reasons that everyone's loving PNRs because mm -hmm. you set the PNR down before you go to bed, you tap it twice, and then you go to sleep. Well, you've just created a room bubble. It doesn't matter how much signal there is, unless that signal is coming from like one of the darkest things in all of history, there's no way it's coming through that field. It's wow. too strong of a bubble. And so it creates this nexus where the signal can't interfere. And it's not just that signal. Like the coolest part about the PNR is this is what took me so long to do it is it allows trees, it allows nature, it allows light to come through it perfectly. 
In fact, it actually enhances and strengthens the bubble and field around you so that you can learn more. We call that integration. So it's really about understanding like the depth of how much we've been programmed by the signal without even realizing it. Our entire lives have become a space where the signal just gets stronger and stronger and stronger, not weaker and weaker and weaker. And just because they're gonna be removing the things that cause the signal, doesn't mean the households that the signal's in are gonna be cleared up instantly. That's our responsibility. The cleanup begins with us. We have to clean it out of ourselves, otherwise we become a signal. In the matrix, they, they do the whole thing where they like, everyone that's not awake can, is working for them whether they want to or not, you know? Well, it's the red dress girl. Like, she's this, this distraction, right? And then all of a sudden, it turns out that it can be taken over. Well, we can be taken over by that signal. In fact, many of us have from time to time. I call it being puppeted. Mm. But the signal is going to be gone. There's not going to be any more of it, which is great. Our children, their children, everyone after isn't going to be growing up in that signal. But we get to clean the space first. So if you, if you really, truly love your kid, clean your house. Energetically, physically, whatever. Bless the soap that you use to clean your house. It's not hard. You can literally just sit there and send light to it, love it, and then just use it and clean your house because the signal is going to be offline as of the 8th of January meaning it won't ever come back online. But it doesn't mean you won't have pockets of it all in your house if you don't clean. So I plan on cleaning from floor to ceiling my entire house on the 8th of January when that happens because oh. I don't want that signal ever in my house again. I don't need that signal ever in my house again. And I believe in myself enough to have the capability and commit to changing my life in that way. And then from then on, it's just biophotons. It's everything we need to heal. You see, when we're sick and when we detox, we're actually just getting it out into our space. So that only helps if you get it out of your space afterward. Mm, that's probably why jail was such a oh, crazy experience in there. It's crazy in there. The I amount of entities to. that come in and talk. Yep. Yeah. One of my nonprofit visions in the future is to actually go into prisons and energetically clean them. I would no love one, to be no a part of that. To have that struggle ever. And mm -hmm. if we have the capability to do it, and it's really just a fun thing. So I will do an initiative around that. It's going to be awesome. I don't know what I'm going to call it. It'll be some cool name. But ideally, like I've been to jail mm -hmm. and I taught meditation. The people were good people in jail. Yeah. And I was in like the felony ward. So it was like the, the supposedly the worst of the worst. And they were all good people. Mm -hmm. So they were given crappy stuff, like the material until I gave them better books was bad books. Like, I mean, like graphic horrible books that reinforced their signal like that's what it was and i'm not saying that these books aren't good books for other people but people that have already been indoctrinated into that signal reading books on how to murder that's an interesting concept to give a murderer a book on how to murder better as their rehabilitation i think that's interesting hmm. or to give someone who is a violent rapist books on eroticism. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, let's let's feed that. Let's feed that signal, that that thing, instead of actually resolving it. Because again, I don't believe, and, and everyone has their own opinion here, but I don't believe that humanity is inherently evil. I don't. I think this original sin perspective and all these other things come from a misunderstanding related to how we are interfering with, with signals. You look at social media, you look at TV, you look at all of these different signals that we're constantly being bombarded with by people that actually know what they're doing. And you, mm. you can watch the social dilemma. I haven't seen it yet, but everyone who said it said that it explains exactly what I'm talking about, which is pretty cool. I'm actually looking forward to watching it when it's time. But the idea that we've been hijacked is a very real concept, but it's not that we've been hijacked. It's that we've been accessed and that we might not believe that we wanted to be accessed because again, we can't see clearly, but we've helped these beings by playing out their drama in our world so that they could go home so that we could have our world back. So whether we wanted to do it or not, we did it. Congratulations, humanity. Good job, everyone. And now it's about us personally upkeeping and making sure that we never create that signal again, because if we decide to go into depression, we become a signal for depression. And if you're in depression, it's totally fine. Clear your house. It's the first thing you do. If you're in depression, mm -hmm. there has to be a space for it to go. So if you're suicidal or depressed, get out of bed and clean your room. 
Uh, then go back to bed. I don't really care. But then when you wake up again, get up, clean your room again, and go back to bed. You just keep doing that. Because what happens is you'll clean the space and the depression can't push on you anymore. Hmm. If you own a PNR and you're depressed, go into your room bubble, clean everything up as best you can in the room with the bubble because it will show you more places to clean than you can imagine. Get it all as clean as possible and then go back to bed. Never, ever, ever go to sleep if you're depressed without cleaning the space first because then you're just sleeping in the depression, which means that you're just going to go deeper into it. If you can, you're depressed, go and hang out with trees. Seriously, that signal will bring you back into a relationship with humanity. It's why they were here in the first place. They're giant antennas that are designed to teach us how to be better. They come from way better planets than Earth. Wow, that's gold, Chase. It's really simple, but just that right there, I'm sure will help so many people. Yep. When I used to get uh, clients all the time, I, I don't work with, so for those of you that have been messaging me and stuff, Skylar is now handling all my messages. I, I don't have room for clients anymore. So I recommend everyone work with MPBO because MPBO is great. They do wonderful mm -hmm. stuff. The coursework, everything is designed specifically to help with getting out of the interference so that you can come into your own signal. And I really appreciate that you guys are messaging me and asking me if I'll sponsor you and I'll help you and everything, but I run 22 companies, so mm -hmm. I, just, I don't have time anymore. I love you guys though, and I'm trying to do these lives and help everyone as much as I can. So bear with me as we work in this new 2021 thing. That being said, you know, when we come into the world, like truly come into the world as ourselves, we begin to interfere with the signal. And so the signal pushes back. And that's what happens when we grow in that level and so it's kind of to be expected but imagine a world where the signal doesn't push back because there is no other signal right and every day you become stronger than the signal was back in the day and then you understand why we're going to be a completely different world very soon because after the 8th of january the signal no longer interferes mm -hmm. so many people over the next few weeks are going to start like because you, you eventually have to leave your house like you, you eventually do leave your house. And so when you leave your house, you're going to get hit with the real signal of earth instead of the illusionary signal of earth. And people are going to be like, why do I feel better? And then they're going to go back in their house. They're going to feel worse and that's fine. But each time that they do, they're going to be bringing the positive signal back into the house instead of the negative signal back into the house. So the same thing that happened before where the signal weighs your house down is eventually going to be the signal of light cleans up your house. But if you want to speed that up on the 8th of January, just clean your entire house as best you can. Mm. Obviously, you'll have to do it multiple times because dimensionality is a thing, but just, just clean your house. Like hire someone if you can't do it yourself or trade out with someone, like whatever you can do, but just seriously, do yourself a huge favor and energetically clean your house. And again, super easy. If you're going to have someone else hired to do it, get the soap buckets, get everything and just sit there and bless it. They can clean it. It's totally fine. It works. If you're going to do it, sit down for a little bit before, do a prayer for yourself, bless everything, however you feel called. And it's as easy as putting your hands on something, closing your eyes and sending love. It doesn't, doesn't take anything else, literally. Like the people make it so complicated, but it's really not that complicated. Your love is brighter than any darkness to ever exist. So just love something and then use it to clean your house. Mm. I love how weird I seem to people these days, like, because I live alone and I've been like self quarantined much of 2020. When I do have conversations with people, you know, I'm like holding my cup of tea or whatever. I'm like, hello tea, it's nice to meet you. People, or I'll just, you know, I'll start discussing something with someone and I'll come in with like these abstract thoughts from kind of out here. And I'm like, wow. I'm getting weirder and weirder. Like the more, yeah. the more I clear, the weirder I become. And I'm sober too. And I'm having these like, you know, really intense experiences with all kinds of amazing things. So I feel pretty blessed today. I feel really That's blessed awesome. today. Yeah. Yeah. We're in a different world, literally, completely different world. And the more data points, the stronger the positive signal is. So it's just becoming more amazing every day. Like the, this, this month, this month is going to be so drastic change. By the yeah. end of this month, we'll have a new universal energy center online. We'll no longer have this signal that's been here for 9,000 years. And we're not going to be steeped in it anymore. And if you clean your house, you're not going to be steeped in it when you sleep. Just even if you can't clean your whole house, clean your room. Like 
definitely clean your room and your bed, wash your sheets, take your mattress, coat it, do whatever you can, like bless out the stuff, clean it. Because where you sleep, just take this for a second. That's eight hours for most people. That's a lot of time to lay in darkness. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just misunderstood energy. So light brings it to clarity. You're going to find that your life's completely different and it's going to be beautiful. But the part that I'm looking forward to the most, everyone on the planet, the more time they spend outside, the better they're going to feel instead of the worst. Can you imagine a world like that? I actually can't. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to witnessing it because I love improving my imagination. Mm -hmm. I have one last thing I'd like to, to speak to. And I, I've been wondering, I've honestly have been wanting to hear your point of view on this for some time. In, in 2017, I came off of like a 15 year Xanax addiction. That was one of the hardest detoxes I've been through. It, I completely lost my mind. I mean, I, I went so far out that my friends actually had to call the ambulance on and say, you need to take her to like the psych ward right now. She's lost touch with reality. And what was, what I was experiencing was this was as real as me sitting here that I can see you now. It was this, it was so real. I was there, I was in it for about 24 hours where there were, I was dealing with versions of people that were the really dark version of them. Yeah. Like a friend of mine was trying to kill me and hunt me and rape me. And like all of these really intricate, deep seated stories that would just all come to, I mean, I'm brilliant if I was coming up with this stuff. <laughs> it was, it was really, really intricate. And my, my question is, was like, is this like a timeline jump? Is this a delusion like brought in from an entity? What's happening with, so with these kinds of things? It's an interesting concept. So here's the thing. When you take Xanax, and I, I know all about this because I was on Xanax mm -hmm. for years for depression and for all the other fun stuff that I got with Marine Corps. So what happens is it's kind of like a timeout. You become a zombie. And so everything is different. It interferes with the signal and it kind of moves you into this weird place where you're not really able to get much done. Even if you're getting stuff done, you're not actually getting stuff done because you're kind of like in a tangent reality. And then what happens is when you cold sober take it off, it's kind of like watching the movie Adjustment Bureau, but instead of being adjusted, you get to witness the thing. And it can be very awkward because you're like, oh, these people are gonna kill me right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not great. Okay, realistically though, are these people gonna kill me or am I just seeing another version of them that wants to kill me? Okay, cool. And the, most people aren't level-headed enough to have that conversation. Mm -mm. because they've just come off of Xanax and they haven't had their own conversations in a long time. They've had the medications conversation in their brain. So mm -hmm. they don't know what they don't know. And so what happens is, yeah, usually all those fun things happen. I think it's any SSRIs or, or do that as well. Like you're, any type of psychotic medication keeps you zoned out on those channels. So you're just kind of like a puppet. But when you come off of it, you see the weave of everything that's been. And it's not that these people wanted to haunt you in this reality, right? But in a reality, that is a true statement. And mm -hmm. because you've been holding away the depression for so long, it hijacks you and changes everything. So the story you get is a very, very filtered story through chaos. And it leads to what people call it as the dark timeline, mm -hmm. where things like that actually happen. So what you experienced was very visceral and real because there's a version of you that did go through that with those people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because everything that ever can be has been i just want to point that out for anyone that doesn't believe that everything that it ever has been or everything that ever can be has been I meaning like if you can dream it up it's happened and there's a version of you that went through it and there's a version of you with someone else like your best friend has been your worst enemy your worst enemy has been your best friend like it, it's happened so when you begin to really acknowledge that and say okay but in this reality what's true it helps a lot. But again, most people don't have the mental bandwidth at that time when they're coming off of something to say, okay, but in this reality, what's true? 
Right. And so we have a psychotic break, which means that you break from reality and they have to put you somewhere until you're capable of stabilizing. But the problem is they put you somewhere where the signal is strong. Yeah. And I don't know if that's by design or if that was just a thing they didn't think of. And honestly, I am not sure. I can tell you when you're in jail that you can't interfere with this, anything that happens outside of jail. So when you're in prison, like the way that it's designed energetically, it's a sealed space. So those things can't come out. So it's there's contained. definitely a design. There's definitely a design. I don't know if it was unintentionally or what, but it feels very intentional. And I think that prisons were designed to help people by taking the people that were lost in the signal and putting them in a space so that that signal wasn't interfering with the world's process. That's what I think happened. Because you look at back in the way they used to do things, it would literally take people and throw them on a different island. They don't have prisons. They're just like, oh, yeah. we're going to continue to Australia. Like, <laughs> You're on a boat. If you, if you survive, you got your freedom. Uh, congratulations. Right. You know, it, it was a whole way of handling things. And it's basically the people that couldn't handle the signal, couldn't keep themselves light enough, were sent away. And so then that led to a whole abandonment issue with us. And it's pretty interesting because like you, you look at like the ancients, uh, like, I think it's the Eskimos, whenever the, the grandparents would become of age, and they could no longer sustain themselves, they would put them on a piece of ice and just float them out to sea. Yeah, <laughs> because they couldn't take care of them anymore. So they would just let nature take care of them, aka a polar bear or something, maul them and kill them. But you see, we look at that as like bad and evil and dark, but you know, when life is, if I don't have enough food to feed my family and this person's already lived and they're ready to leave so that the family can survive, you know, there's all these things that we can't conceive of. So when you look at prisons and you look at the style and the way that everything's built, it kind of makes sense. If I don't know that there's a signal that's causing these people to become corrupted, and I just put these corrupted people here where the signal isn't affecting us anymore, then there's less corruption in the world. But then what happens when there's the signal gets stronger? Because in the 90s, they turned it up tremendously. Because instead of it just being a fog coming from the negative ETs, it became something that came over mainstream media into us. It became something that became broadcasted through cell phone towers and everything else. Mm -hmm. And so as we continued to come into technology, the signal was enhanced. And then it became too many criminals to put in just a box because the box was overflowing. So then problems came up. And it's a very interesting way of looking at things. I'm glad that that way is coming to a close. And like I said, I really do want to clean up prisons and things because I think energetically cleaning all of that up would probably be one of the greatest things. I actually had this whole initiative where I was gonna create these uh, energized water devices for showers and install them in all the homeless shelters in the world mm -hmm. because homeless people are the most affected by the signal. Yeah. And so if I could create a water that would wash that signal out of the field and then strengthen the field at the same time, and then we were able to give it to the homeless people, that would be awesome. We got turned down on our proposal, but it's still gonna happen. It's just gonna take a while longer. That's the clean water initiative. I want the world to have a clean signal so that they can find themselves again. And I love that business as well. I could probably help you with the homeless thing. Yeah. They, it, it's something about me working with the homeless that doors open. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So this last part I would like to speak to is that, so I've, I've been in these delusions trapped in my mind before. I've been completely lost with this reality. That's a hard place to come back from. Mm -hmm. It took me months to come back to center from after that experience. And even after that, there was, my body would have a reaction around these people. Yep. in this timeline and my body would feel super unsafe and all this stuff would come up and I would eventually have to be like, I need to actually take space and, and figure this out. Um, but in 2020, there was a lot of crazy things happening in Salt Lake city where I live. Like there was riots. I live right downtown. Right. So there was like riots right outside my apartment complex, burning cop cars, like a lot of, you know, um, there's like helicopters and tanks on the street. It was really intense here this summer. And what was really interesting for me was the PTSD 
from those delusions were highlighted during that time because I'm watching all this stuff happen and I'm like, oh my God. And then there's this, this understanding coming in that you don't really like, this is what I was experiencing in my mind. I really don't know what's happening right now. There's like some agenda happening behind the scenes here. That's being like, I don't, I can't really trust what I'm seeing. And, and that like really um, highlighted my mind and my mental health and all of these other things were just, um, I wasn't in a very good space. Yeah. And I think that this is happening to people globally, but yep. they might not have the awareness of that this is what's happening from other lifetimes or whatever, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so whenever you have any issue, whatever it is, it's called, it's stored in your cellular memory. Mm -hmm. Your cellular memory, if you have delusions, which I don't call them delusions, by the way, I just call them lead throughs because what it is, is it's information. So your body, the body that you're in right now is an omnidimensional thing. We don't know that yet on this planet, but it is. Mm -hmm. So what that means is all those things, the reason they're very real is because they actually happen to this body. The body that you're yeah. in, everything you can conceive of has happened to it. Your job is to neutralize everything that can happen. And as you do that, that signal from all the other things or the bleed throughs doesn't have the effect on you anymore. But your cellular memory is a very real thing. Your cellular memory has been in every dimension. Your cellular memory has been in every parallel theory. Everything that can be has happened in that cellular memory. It's what we call a God cell. It's the space where all that is that is required to become God has been. And all you have to do is neutralize it so that it is a neutral frequency or an empty space. Because when you do that, then you become God. Can you do that? I don't know. Can I do that? I don't know. I will definitely try though. We'll see how it goes. But that's what it is. So the memories you're having that you're calling delusions are bleed throughs from other realities into this world. And that's mm -hmm. why the tool, the, the most anyone out there that has illusions, ask yourself, okay, but is it happening in this reality? When you say that immediately, reality reframes and you go, okay, well, no, it's not happening in this reality. Yes, I can acknowledge it did happen. Cool. Did this individual that's in front of me in this reality do those things? No? Cool. Okay. So I can forgive the individual in the other reality that did those things because it's not this reality. A lot of people in the past hated me. I'm probably one of the most hated people on this planet. Because, and the most loved. Yeah, exactly. Because in one timeline, if I'm light, I have to be dark. Mm -hmm. And so people often tell me, and I actually, whenever we had the, the merge and everything came together, we had people from the chaos timeline come in. And on the chaos timeline, I was evil incarnate. Literally, like the darkest of darkness. Because in the, the order timeline, I was one of the light beings. So mm -hmm. it just had to be the way that it was. So they came in and, and they were telling me like, Jason, you know, I don't trust you. I was like, that's totally fine. I understand. Can you tell me why? And they're like, well, you led the Illuminati. You did all this stuff. You did this and this. And it was like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks for letting me know. I mean, I get to work on that now. I'm going to go ahead and neutralize that. And so as people kept coming to me with these crazy things that I did, I would just be like, thank you for sharing. I'm going to neutralize that. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to neutralize that because any judgment I had over those things, I had to clear out. Otherwise, those things would still be in the collective as a delusion or what mm. I call a bleed through. A bleed through. And it led to this really awkward time, all of 2020 really, because it started on January 18th. And from then till pretty much the 21st of November, people have been like coming out of the woodworks telling me I'm evil, I've done all these things and all this other stuff. There was all these documents written about me. There was all these posts. It was like this huge smear campaign. And I just mm. had to sit there and be like, okay, in a reality that happens. This isn't the reality it's in. I can acknowledge that. This person's coming from that reality. It's their story. I can accept that they're okay in that story. And that this is where they're coming from. Can I neutralize it within me? And I kept doing that. I kept getting hate mail and all that stuff. And it was, it was fun in the way that it wasn't fun. But it became fun because I began to explore it and be like, well, at least they're coming to me, right? It could be much worse. They could be thinking all these things and not saying anything. How, how much harder would it be to heal then? Because then you don't know what you're supposed to heal. 
in this case, at least people came to me and told me. So, or they posted stuff about me, which I could read and be like, okay, cool, clearing that out, clearing this out, clearing that out. So you can look at any situation as a negative situation or a positive situation. I tend to try to find the positive in it. 2020 allowed me to become a better person because I pretty much cleared out. And I'm not going to say I totally cleared out because I'm not an idiot. The, the chaos version. <laughs> You know, to the point where people that were in a deep-seated mistrust of me actually trust me now because they realize that that's from another reality and I'm not that same person. So to me, I feel like I've done a lot of work on that. Now, if you're one of those people out there that think I'm evil incarnate, please just send me a message and say, hey, Jason, you're evil incarnate because because I, I feel like I did a lot of work on it. But if there's still stuff there, I want to work on it. So thank you for that mm. in advance. Mm. I love that you play at that level. It's amazing. And if I you, trigger you, please come to me and let me know. Yeah, you, you, you have to though. Like, If you really want to be yourself completely, you have to clean up the thing that's not you first. And I know who I am. So if somebody tells me who I'm not, then that helps me to clean up the part that I'm not. Hmm. But yeah, I call them lead throughs, not delusions, because delusion is a very charged word on this planet. And it means a lot of medical things and a lot of labels. So I found that calling them bleed throughs actually helps people to heal faster. Because when they go delusion, then immediately they go into psychosis and all these other things, which yeah. is down a rabbit hole of medical jargon that they then don't understand. And then they create more misunderstood where it was easy for them to just be like, oh, yeah, I had a bleed through moment where all these things came from other realities and I got to process them. And then you're free of that whole rabbit hole. Nice. Bleed through has been pioneered. Like me and my team have called it that for years. So when we say bleed through and you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, no, that's actually pretty easy to work with. But when you hear delusion, it's like, oh, for that, that's been pioneered for years as well. But yeah. Well, thank you for that. I've had many drug induced psychosis. That's what they would usually call it in a psych ward in a mental institution. And here in America, to lose your mind is like, there's so much shame mm -hmm. around around mental illness, around losing your mind, drug-induced psychosis. Um, I made a post like a few weeks ago where I actually showed a picture of myself where I had picked an entire layer of skin off my face when I got trapped in a, a mirror mm -hmm. in on methamphetamines and Xanax. And this had happened more times than one for sure, but it was like, you know, the bugs coming out of my face and, and this, I got like trapped in this short circuit in the mirror yep. where I just couldn't stop picking my face. And, you know, what's interesting is that, you know, that photo was in 2018 and it's 2021. And for the majority of 2020, I've been doing coursework where one of the practices is to turn off the lights, to light a candle and to look at yourself in the mirror. Now, when I first saw that, I was like, oh God. You know, and people are like, I love this. I love this practice. And I'm like, oh, I would save it till the very end of the day. I'm like, oh God, I do not want to look at myself in the mirror for 11 minutes or whatever with the lights off and a candle on. Yeah. And I can feel like just the emotion coming up in me on how much work that's been for me just to hold my own reflection like that. Exactly. That's actually one of the most intense practices because it allows you to look at all that you've ever been. Clearly, mm -hmm. like most people's face morphs into different past life imagery. Uh, some people see demon faces. I've, I've actually heard pretty much everything at this point for teaching. And I love that practice because it gives people an opportunity to neutralize whatever they think they are. Mm -hmm because you're supposed to be staring at yourself and, and healing what comes up. And if you can neutralize what comes up, it never has to come up again because it's come up and out. If you shame and blame it, you push it back down and then it comes up even more intense the next time. And the fact that you do that, that practice you'll be doing for a very long time if you continue yeah. the coursework. So yeah. by the time that you finish that practice, you've neutralized all these aspects of you that you're afraid of or ashamed to be. And I think that's one of the greatest things we can ever do. I think the work for me in that practice is to just not check out. Like I look in the mirror and my body's like, nope, 
I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm like, wait, wait, hold on. It's okay. You're safe. Like be here. It's okay. It's different now. This is the whole practice. Yeah. There hasn't been anything really coming through. It's more like, Hey, Hey, whoa, well, whoa, easy. <laughs> body in you. So yeah. you're, you're weaving you back into your body. And then from there, the mirror will change. But right mm. now what's happening is the experience that traumatized your body is not allowing you to see what you could see. So instead you're working on healing the trauma in your body. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just the phase you're on. Mm -hmm. And so that's beautiful. And I'm glad that this could trigger you in that way so that you and your body could get deeper together. Because mm -hmm. honestly, like the closer that you are with your body, the better life becomes, not the worse. And, and the thing that we've been taught is the more that we're disconnected from our body, the easier life is. But it's actually not easier because other things doing the work for us mean that we're not getting the lessons we came for. So why are we here? That's what we call meaningless existence in the organization. You're le le leading a life of lack of meaning because something else is running you. You're not being you. If you're you and you're, you're a failure, congratulations, at least now you're exploring failureism as you, you know? And so then eventually, if you explore being a failure as you, you can then explore being a success as you. Mm. And then that's really fun, super fun actually. But if you are being a failure because something else is running you, you're never going to understand what success is. You're, the thing that's running you might have success from time to time, but you can't claim it as your own. And it causes a lot of problems in our psyche when we allow things to run us constantly. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on being willing to heal, though. That's the part that I find is the, the hardest thing for most people is the willingness. The coursework will get you there, but are you willing to show up at 100% and do the practices? And most people aren't, actually. So many people fail acceptance, it's not even funny. And acceptance mm. is the easiest course I think I've ever written in my entire life. Yeah. But it's the simple fact that to accept something requires that you actually do the work. And people are like, nah, I don't really need to do it. I'm above this. And it's like, okay, cool. Thanks for, mm. for uh, letting me know early that you're not worth my time. It, mm. it helps a lot. That's why we actually wrote the acceptance course was one, because we feel like acceptance is the key to everything. But also it weeds out the people who just want to complain. Because it's easy to do something if you commit to it. But most people, they don't want to commit because they want someone else to do the work. And that's what I love about the coursework so much is that it's about you doing your own work and us just helping when we can. I don't know who your facilitator is, but most likely they have an approach where you're just doing your thing. And then whenever you need them, they're there. Mm -hmm. That's the goal because if we're always there, then how do you learn? We could teach you our way, but it's not your way. Our way is our way. So if you're in coursework and you're learning your way from your own divinity, like why would we step in between that and be like, oh, yeah, we know better than you. So uh, <laughs> it doesn't work. And that's why I've been so confused on this planet for so long. Is like, I look at other teachers and that's how they do it. They're like, actually, you don't know what you're talking about. Here, here's this thing over here. Go do this thing instead. And that's not like, that doesn't make sense to like, do the work. When you have questions, after you've come to your own ascended value and you figured out what isn't or is for you, then ask, and then you learn new things. Ascended point of view, so much more fun in my opinion. Mm. You know, I've spent so long in the chaos timeline. Like most of my twenties, I don't remember. Um, um, I've spent so much time on that chaos timeline, just fully in it, thinking that's the only way. And I didn't even know what the ascension was two and a half years ago. You know, I never, I didn't have space or room <laughs> in yeah. anywhere near me to even begin to take in these concepts, not even close. But what's really cool is that how quickly I'm unlocking just and I don't, I don't have to like release a lot around the ascension or these concepts. I'm like, that feels true. Cool. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people who are struggling in addiction and with mental health and, and in a lot of seeming dark places where it's important that we keep in mind that these people are right on time exactly. for, for their agreements and for what they came here to do. 
And maybe they're just steps away from unlocking this huge part of themselves. And if we try to intervene and think we know better, we actually derail them from that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people that, you know, I can see, I can see energy. I can see these, these, the spirit, the, the energy filled around a lot of the people who are in psychosis walking around Salt Lake City or, you know, in some drug induced rant somewhere on the street corner. And I can see how powerful they are. I can see how, how beautiful they are really. And I really feel, I really innately feel that many of these people who is, who seemingly appear to be doing worse than ever and may appear to be getting worse than ever for a while are meant to unlock quickly yep. and will be like pioneering a new way out of the darkness for others and just shy, just coming straight to the front lines of the ascension and assisting the planet so i well, just want to speak to that than any of us interesting Literally. so most of these people have been stuck in a loop for nine thousand years when they get out of that loop imagine all the wisdom on earth that they've embodied you know what I mean? So like they know how to build earth to another plane because they've mm. been stuck here since that happens. See, what a lot of people don't get is when the whole Atlantean thing happened and those zero dimensional beings came out, they took bodies, which led to a split within consciousness. And so a ton of high level, amazing, beautiful spiritual beings got possessed yeah. with the zero dimensional entity and stuck here. And then their memory was wiped. And they've been just doing the best they can for 9,000 plus years on this planet. So these could be like some of the best ascended masters in history. Exactly. That are just stuck. And as more of us work through things, then it happens. You know, what's really cool is when I was doing like the look at this at this year, and I looked at January and I saw that January 7th, so this grand awakening. And I was like, wait, like grand awakening? Like grand awakening? And then eventually after that i started seeing the signal dissipating until it ceased to exist and i was like oh yeah grand awakening i get it now if the signal wasn't interfering and divinity came online truly and we were able to feel divinity ripple through us so that we knew the truth and we couldn't be lied to anymore yeah humanity would grandly awaken yeah that would be what would happen that's january 7th is when it starts the grand awakening is a window so it's the, the, the entire signal is done on the 8th of January, but it's like early on the 8th of January. So the 7th is like when this new energy comes in to replace that signal and it's our own divine blueprint. So like, dude, that's going to change the world. There's nothing to interfere anymore. And now we're connecting back to true source. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but those beings that have been stuck, they're going to start to be unstuck because there's nothing reinforcing their stuckness. Hmm. And then they're going to see all the examples all around that aren't stuck. And they're going to be like, wait, you mean I don't need this piece on me anymore? Whoa, I can let that go? Wait, can I do it again? <gasps> I can let that go? I can let that go? I can let that go? And they're going to just like de-armor. And you're going to be like sitting there and you're going to be like, whoa, dude. dude <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> wait, 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 let me just, oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. Congratulations. Good job. Yeah. Because at first they're going to blind you. They're going to, it's going to be surprising. It is. Kind of like, and here's an example that I'll give, because this is a great example. If you're older, you've seen a ton of rainbows in your life. I'm not saying that it's not different when you still see a rainbow, you still probably feel really happy about it. But imagine a child when they tell you the first time they see a rainbow. Mm -hmm. Imagine what happens. You gain this new understanding from pure innocence. These people that have been stuck are going to tell you about their rainbow for the first time and it's going to help you to remember how beautiful a rainbow actually is because you've been awake and aware for a while according to you and they <laughs> are going to be new and when they share their newness with you it's going to release so much of your jadedness that you're going to let go and be like whoa yeah rainbows are awesome thanks for letting me know that again Let's just stare at that for a few hours. We get so caught up in our normal everyday thing that we forget to celebrate. And they're going to help us remember to celebrate because their level of gratitude, like what Misty's holding right now, is, yeah, Misty's holding the perfect example. So thank you for holding that. I 
love you. Love you too. Thank you for having this conversation with me. Thank you for being an example to me to where I can learn so much just from being in your field, you know? Thank you for being willing to show up. Mm. I love when people are willing because then we can have great conversations that change the world. Mm. I can't wait to see what you, I would love to co-create with you in the prison initiative there's magic there for me and it would be an honor to do anything with you surrounding that and with the homeless. I think you'll be surprised what I can accomplish in those areas. Awesome. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. going to be something I'm really hoping to do by the middle of the end of this year. I'm waiting okay. on funds and resources and connections, but I will definitely keep you appraised of that because that's, I'm very passionate about it. I've got to experience it and I don't believe that anything in my journey was given to me for no reason. So I want to get good books into the prison systems, like ones mm -hmm. that help people to heal and to grow and to create their own signal and come online. I want to create a media platform that works for the prison where they are able to watch spiritual videos that have been screened and are, are okay for them. Mm -hmm. You know, Because mm -hmm. obviously there's all kinds of laws and rules around it. But, and then I also want to create a crew that actually goes into every prison in, in the world, hopefully, but in the United States at least, and like does an energetic cleaning on it. Mm -hmm. and helps to kind of stabilize it maybe i'll make a product specifically for that i don't know yet but oh that's my, my vision is to do it because i make a, a cleaning product that can clean your house on a level that's just insane mm -hmm. it's an amazing thing that i give out to my friends every once in a while i'm like hey you're gonna clean your house right now actually yeah i was thinking i was like here you go and then they, they take it and then they spray their house and it's just like the world changes in their house wow. it cleans the signal like that it's designed to clean the signal so you know, I, I might make something like that and then pay prisons to use it because they all, it's all about money for them. Mm -hmm. As long as you're willing to pay them, they'll do pretty much anything. So, One of the things I would like to do is to go into prisons and speak to people who have life sentences. So really deep, dark levels of seeming darkness, like, you know, like this person's trapped forever. All hope is lost per se. And just speak to them to those who have found their divinity within that space. And it sounds like with some of the support you'll be bringing in and just with the support that's coming through in energy and with the clearing that's happening now on the planet, that this will be more accessible to people to find that divinity, even in like such a seemingly hopeless situation. Yep. I actually that's don't really think beautiful. there will be life sentences on this planet. I think a lot of them are gonna be pardoned and a lot of things is gonna change I don't think it'll happen right away, but when the signal is removed and people realize what actually happened here, because there is going to be a lot of uh, putting together history from the true perspective that's going to happen over these next few years. I believe we're going to have extraterrestrials come in and they're going to help us. They're already starting to, to announce themselves. Like uh, mm -hmm. there's this thing where the guy's name was Thor something and he was part of the Pentagon for I think 70 or 90 years and he was an alien from mm -hmm. Venus and they've acknowledged it now so they've been learning from the venetians for a while he which, feels very strong yeah and just so connecting with that. that then you've got the fact that the current administration has been working with the galactic federation and that's mm -hmm. been in the news like you know it, it's starting to weave together in a way where you're, i think that soon we're going to as humanity get our history back and our history is so important. It's one of the reasons why whenever people try to destroy history, I'm not a fan. It's because your history shows you what not to do. No one's history is ever going to show you what to do, ever. Because your history is designed to teach you something so that you can live presently and build a better future. So you're never going to get it right in history. Like, if you go back 20 years, did you have the answer? <laughs> if you go forward 20 years and you look back at this moment, did you have the answer? Mm -hmm. It will always be that. You will always have access to more life force and more awareness when you're older and you're younger. So I can't imagine like what it would look like to have human history given back. I mean, like 8 billion plus years of the story of human history is lost. So we don't know about which planets we came from. We don't know that we're not actually from Earth, that we're a transplant species. We don't know 
anything really as, as a race. We only know what we remember and we had a memory wipe 9,000 years ago. So like, yeah, that helps. Yeah, we found some stuff by digging in the dirt. It's not really all that helpful when you don't have the memory of what it's even related to. And so when we get that memory back and when we also get that story back and we get the history back, it's gonna be a very different history than we remember. There's some people on this planet that are getting closer and closer every day. But I, I think that it's going to require kind of a little bit of an intervention on our part, because there are beings that were here when the memory wipe happened, that were able to get away before it happened and have full recall of everything. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be probably the ones helping us piece together our true story. But when I look forward to where we're headed, I'm very happy with all of it. I, I don't see a world where we need to segregate people anymore. I don't see a world where criminality even exists. It's not because we have such strict sanctions against it, but because none of us want to do that to each other. We all want to work together in harmony. And for the longest time, I think the signal has caused that to be misunderstood. Because again, it's all the fear. But the fear is because it was locked in a lower dimensional game for a long time. I mean, I can't imagine being stuck in a pocket dimension, not able to go home for 9,000 plus years like that. Yeah. I don't know what would happen to me, to be honest with you, because you'd be conscious the entire time. Like that would be a horrible men like experience. Ah, ah. The Incredible. mental health issues they're dealing with, you know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, can't even imagine the issues that given that much time and being stuck in it mm -hmm. and, and also being solidly stuck in it because they're like stuck as as like a corporeal entity like it's it's like it's like being crammed in a coffin and put underground for nine thousand plus years hmm. but being awake and aware the whole time prison yeah but but worse because but you, worse. Can't move. you can't do anything with anything in prison the cool part about prison was when i was in prison i was able to walk circles and, and that helped me so much. I yeah. would come out of my cell and I would be able to walk circles all day. And at least I was able to create momentum, get myself sure. moving. And then I was able to teach meditation classes all day. So it was really actually not a bad thing for me. Right. Everybody was open and wanting to learn. You can't even do that. Like you're in a, imagine you're in a coffin for 9,000 years. You lose all sense of time and reality. And you dream up the worst things you can imagine. Mm. Because you just keep going deeper and darker. And you don't feel supported. You have no help whatsoever until eventually humanity gets here on this planet and starts doing things. And you're like, oh, I can help them do this thing. And they're, you know, but you don't have the best answers because you've been stuck. I honestly don't think they were trying to hurt us. I think they did the best they could with what they had. Mm -hmm. So I, I bless them. I wish them well. And I've forgiven them of all the wrongdoing that I believe that they did because they didn't actually do any wrongdoing. I have this, I've been wondering this in, sp in specifically with you. Um, do you honestly not deal with any negative self-talk, any inner voices, any, is this not something that you, that right. you experience? But I've had that since I was a kid. So there's actually a thing called inner monologue and then there's not an inner monologue. And they've now discovered that it's a real thing that there are a few people on the planet that don't have thoughts as most people understand them. It's actually a whole thing called neurodiversity and it's really fascinating. I didn't know anything about that. So as a kid growing up, I actually thought everyone had yeah. like I did. Mm -hmm. How would you not? Yeah. And then now very recently, I started learning people didn't have thoughts. And so it was like, or wait, or people have thoughts. And I was like, wait, what, huh? So it's the reason why I talk like I talk is I don't think about what I'm saying. I just am a clear channel and I just- Sure. This is me being me as much as I can. But I thought everyone did that for the longest time. And then when I actually got to experience thoughts, because I prayed and I wanted to understand what I wasn't understanding, that was the scariest and worst thing I ever did to myself. Hmm. Because imagine having 30 years of thoughts just dumped into you instantly. And you're like, wait, what? No, how do I handle it? And then after a day of it, I was like, that's what everyone else goes through. Yeah. Uh, so much more compassion. So much more compassion. Because I didn't understand where it didn't understand, you know? 
but no, I, I don't have that. Uh, and what's interesting is a lot of my students that did have it when they get to a certain level in coursework, they don't have it anymore either. Yay. So it makes me really wonder how much of that is the signal and mm -hmm. like the process of it. I know for a fact that the last time I was here, like I, I came straight down this time in this body. Mm -hmm. So I've had a chance to go home and to debrief. And so I'm not saying I'm better than anyone or anything else. It's just, yeah, that, that helped me a lot to do what I came here to do. Mm. And I'm not saying, again, this doesn't make me magical or better or anything. It makes me an example so that others can get there on their own. Because I think, let's say that there's 9,000 year old people. I think they're actually going to be better than I am because they've had time on earth. And when they finally heal the trauma, the wisdom they're going to have is, is right. be greater than, than my information. Mm -hmm. so, again, my job is to really just help the way be clear, but then it's to step back and let people create a better way. Like, I just want to make the world better. I don't care how we do it. I don't care who does it. Just let's make the world better. I mean, that's what we're here for, right? So who cares <laughs> who does it? Let's just do it. We're on the same team, right? That's, that's, I've never understood that, why people don't see it that way. I'll give you an example. I, um, I created this thing called the Homeless Huts Initiative. Mm -hmm. It was a huge thing for me. I really wanted to do it. Mm. And then I got sidetracked. And I said, okay, God, I, I can't do this right now because I have all these other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and let it go into the collective. Now, there's an initiative called the Homeless Huts Initiative that someone else did that is literally the exact same thing, same spec, same size, everything wow. that I mm -hmm. dreamed of. And somebody sent it to me and they, I guess they thought that I would be upset or maybe they just wanted to celebrate it. I'm not sure, but I was like, yes, mm. Thank God, that's one less thing that I, I, I need to do now. And now whenever I actually begin to work with that project, I'm gonna hire that team to buy yeah. those buildings to do my project because why would I reinvent the wheel? The infrastructure is already in place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's beautiful because, see, I think a lot of people don't understand there's a stream of consciousness. It's a stream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and, and, it, and the, the thoughts go in circles. So if I have an idea and I can't do that idea and I can workshop the pieces that can work, I then don't hoard my idea. I get it right. back to the stream and then the next thing comes. And the thing is, the thing that I gave back here, it's a circle. So if it goes through everyone else and no one else is able to solve it, it comes back to me, but it comes back to me more solved. And then I go, oh, here's the final piece. Cool. That's not my idea. That's our idea. I just was the one that put it into physicality, right? Like that's, that's how it works. So we're, we are team humanity. So the next time you have this great idea and you're like, oh, but I only will never work. Then finish what will work and then give it back. I actually do that. I literally go, Okay, so, mm -hmm. and then I, I give it like, I, I, I physically do this. And the reason is because I want to acknowledge I am freely surrendering this idea to whoever can complete it. It's so important that we don't hoard ideas and hold on to them and think mm -hmm. that they define us. Right. We are a team and if we don't act like it, then how are we ever going to get better? The good news is I think the signal going away is going to help us act like a team. It's just, I, I have a feeling that we're not bombarded with fear anymore it's gonna be a lot easier to do things especially out of love but we'll see <laughs> grand awakening just sounds awesome i think if you spent a day in my with my mind you would be just completely blown away you're like you walk around with all this like just constant constant bombarding of thoughts and uh, i saw this one practice you posted it was like Oh, Jason, it was like the, you said it was kind of like clearing the computer. Like you, you set a timer for five minutes and you just let the thoughts come, the unanswered oh, yeah. questions. Yeah. This seems like a practice that could be really helpful to other people too. Oh yeah. A lot of the coursework practices are incredible. The only problem is the reason that we, we put them behind everybody is like, well, why, why, why do you charge for the courses? And the mm. reason is because if you're not putting energy towards something and it's like working with time, it can be very dangerous. So we've had people rip off our courses and take our practices and give them out to people. And it leads to a lot of problems. 
Because if you're not doing it properly and you don't have the support, because MTBO, the way we design our courses is you have a facilitator that's in the space with you and you're doing the thing and they're being an example of the thing that's been done so that you have a reflection point in reality to stabilize the current. If you don't have the reflection point in reality to stabilize the current because this person's trained in it, right? though it might not look like anything's happening, in the invisible world, a lot's happening because this person's trained in it. They went through mm. like four years of training. So this seamlessly easy task is very easy because you have an example of a completed value that spent four years of their life in dedication to get there so that this easy value can happen so that you can leapfrog 30 years in a year. Mm. I mean, that's, that's incredible to be able to do that. But if you take that practice and you rip it off, and you decide to share that practice with somebody, they're not in a container. All you've right. done is highlight them at a level that they can't process because they don't have an example in physicality. Process it. We've had so many people message us and say, hey, your coursework is evil. It made my life miserable. And I was like, okay, cool. Wow. Who did you pick it with? And then they tell me somebody I've never heard of. And I'm like, that's not an MTBO approved facilitator. How much do you pay for the course? And they're like, oh, it was like 10 grand. And I'm like, okay. We don't charge that much on purpose. We are very specific in the way that we do our things. Mm -hmm. So you weren't with an approved facilitator. I apologize for your experience, but it was taught improperly. You can't just take something if you don't have the mastery and understanding of it and share it. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. becomes very dangerous, especially when you're working with time manipulation to do so. So we have regulations in place on purpose. Same reason that all of our facilitators are sober. We don't want the negative interference. Because if you have that signal and you're not upkeeping your space, now that signal is in the container and then people are having to deal with that. So we make sure that all of that never happens. And that's just one of the reasons that it's behind all that. But also because when you put your stored energy toward yourself in a way that's in front of you, very important. Because if you're like, oh, courses are going to fix my life. No. <laughs> that's not how it works. Courses will probably destroy your life. And then you'll realize that your life was built by something that wasn't you and you'll be happy about it. But that doesn't usually happen in the first few months. Your first few months, you're like, why is my life falling apart? I don't understand. Because you mm -hmm. didn't build your life. When you actually begin to build your life though, you build on truth and it's so worth it. You can ask any mm -hmm. of them to they'll tell you the same thing. Oh, coursework, I thought it was gonna change my life in a positive way and now it has, but it took three years. It's like, yeah, it doesn't anymore because now the app is so much faster. But the idea is, if you didn't build it, it will be destroyed. But you also don't want things in your life that you didn't build. That means you're not in it. You didn't actually create it. You didn't connect to it. So why is it in your life? Because someone else built it for you and you don't need that. That's actually what she used as a perfect example is room, taking up room. If you want to be totally you, all the things that are there need to be you. They need to be your choices, your actions, your world. Otherwise, what was the point? Come to earth as someone else? We didn't sign up for that. Mm. We got hijacked, but we didn't sign up for that. We signed up for the getting hijacked. Part. Yeah, but I mean, like the things that happened afterwards, that was us choosing to do things by giving our power away. I actually was referring to a post that you made. It's not it's not a practice you that's inside of a container of coursework, but oh. I love everything that you just said though. It was really informative anyhow. Yeah. But I feel like I'm complete. Do you feel complete? Is there anything yeah, else you'd like to say? I don't know how long we've been here. But About an, almost two hours now. Yeah, well, see, there we go. Well, it covered a lot, helped mm -hmm. some people, and uh, I, I yeah, feel complete. Mm -hmm. Oh, Happy New Year's, everyone. Happy New Year's, everyone. Yeah. yeah I feel complete. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you everyone for joining us today on this live. I had an amazing time. I feel fantastic. So awesome. much love and peace. Thank you for having me. Have a blessed and beautiful one. Bye everyone. Bye.